personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. The Man Behind the Frame, another adventure of George Valentine. Talk on the telephone. How can I? Ah, uh, that's better. Bunch of crazy banshees. Hello. Yes, yes. Now I can hear you. Lawrence Ferguson, the kid. Well, sure he works for me. Came down from Emmitsville with me just yesterday. What did he do? Get high on too much soda pop? <laughs> oh, look, friend. Whoever you are, I'm no nursemaid. Don't bother me with any of this. Uh, shut up, you guys. He what? When? Where did he... Look, Lieutenant, for God's sakes, tell me. All right. Of course. County jail. I got it. Dear Mr. Valentine, my name's Vic Burnett, Federal Office Equipment Company. You remember, the guy sold you the wire recorder for your office. Well... I'll cancel out the last three payments on it if you come down fast to the county jail. I need help. A crazy rube I brought into town for a convention just so he could see the sights is now staring at the inside of a cell. He's been locked up for murder. Okay, Mr. Burnett, okay. But I feel responsible for him. He's never been down here before. He's not even a salesman. You see, up in Emmitsville, you I You want have to see him, kid... Valentine, or don't Just you? Just a minute, Lieutenant Johnson. He's never done anything but read comic books, but I can't let him get railroaded like a well, common... I'm every... sure he's not being railroaded for anything, and a woman is dead, isn't she? Miss Brooks, listen to me. This kid That's is... That's a good absolute... idea. You listen to him, Brooksy. Come on, Johnson. Gladly. Oh, Valentine, wait a I minute. just want to hear it from the kid himself. That's all. What a job. My poor boy's in the hands of the law. Oh, well, that guy's just trying to help. I'm an old man. This guy's like Burnett. Help me get that way. What's eating you? You'll see. Here. Through here. A woman was murdered, huh? Take it from there. Hotel apartment where she lived. Name was Sally Fife. High-speed typist. Hmm. Typist. Yeah, where do you meet her? What happened? You'll see. Oh, look, Johnson. Blow on the side of the head with a bottle. Oh. Little party? Little gal about 35, fast talker, neat, clean, small business of her own that didn't amount to anything. Fight, sure, a fight of some kind. What else? This is a very refreshing original story. Why was the kid picked up? Were there witnesses? He was caught trying to run down a fire escape this morning. Taking us all day to even pry his name out of him. Well, I don't see He's 26. Skinny, sandy-haired, pimply-faced 26, and probably never earned more than 26 a week in his life either. You see for yourself. Hey, wake up. Ferguson. Oh, excuse me. Hello, sir. Sure. I don't stand up, can't I? Just thought you were asleep. No, sir, I can't sleep. I just shut my eyes like that. I do it in the office sometimes so people don't know I'm thinking. Okay, I'm not, sir. This is Mr. Valentine. Sure. How do you do, sir? Whatever you say. Yeah, hello. Sit down, Lawrence. Yeah. Well, you want to hear it, too, I guess. I don't feel very good, you know. Last night you had some drinks. Yeah. See, Mr. Valentine, I'm just a clerk in the office. Up in Emmitsville, I mean. Been there nine years. Uh 
I've begged so many times to come to conventions of bosses, Mr. Burnett. He even... Last night you went to a movie and after that a bar called The Silver Duck and you had some drinks. Uh There was a banquet on the schedule, but of course, I'm not a regular salesman. I mean, just a clerk, you know. But I do handle the boss's correspondence and the district records and things. Well, I, I was alone last night. I don't know anybody in the city or anything. You knew this woman, didn't you? This Sally Fife? No. What? No, I, I didn't. Not until then. In the bar, I mean. He met her there. Very refreshing. It's true, too. Go on. Well, I had several, I guess. You know how it is when a guy's alone. On the town, so to speak. I, I don't remember very well, but... I guess I met her. She was awful nice. Anyway, sometime later, I didn't feel very well. Yeah, sure. It was a long way back to the hotel, and she said she'd make me some coffee up at her place close by. But she was nice. I don't want you guys thinking anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know all about it. Tell them what happened when you got there. I've told you. I I, I don't know. It's not clear. I'm not used to... I mean... I don't know whether I drink the coffee or not. All I know is that it's daylight and I'm asleep on the sofa. All right, hold it, kid, hold it. There was a fight, wasn't there? You had trouble with this girl and then... Stop it, leave me alone. All right, I I, I ran, sure, I ran. I I tried to get out the fire escape, only my head was all dizzy. I would have got away if it hadn't been for that. That's this morning when they caught you. Get back to last night. Well... uh, There she was. There... What do you think? I killed her. Oh, you did. Well, tell me about it. Refreshing original story. I don't know. I'll tell you what. I, I wanted to have excitement, what it feels like to be kicked around and yelled at by all them salesmen. A clerk, sure. He'll never get any place. You know, they're all fakes, all of them. Loud mouth jerks I could wrap around my finger any time you ask. Salesman, I'm better than any of them. Cut it out, kid. Now, easy. You said you killed a woman. I must have, don't you see? Nobody else was up there, I remember. I'm sorry I shoot my mouth off, but I'm just trying to forget. I, I wish I was just being a clerk now. Uh, remember, <laughs> forget. It was her idea you had some coffee last night, I suppose. Well, it seems that way. It wasn't mine. How did you know? Oh, for the love of... Kid, haven't you ever heard of a thing like this happening to anybody besides you? What? Well, nobody ever got in trouble like this before. Nobody ever did the things that I must... Oh, cut it out, Rube. I can't stand it, eh? Well, the facts are all true, Valentine. The ones we could check. Same old story. What are you talking about? I'm just a guy who... Hasn't it ever occurred to you you might be a sucker? Oh, never mind, Johnson. Never mind. What's he held for? He signed a confession of anything? You think I milk, take milk away from babies? Suspicion, that's all. Then how about taking him out of here? What's the name of that bar you said, uh, the Silver Duck? Come on, Lawrence. I want to see if you know how to swim. What's the idea, Mr. Valentine? This is where I was, all right. Relax, but I... relax. Nobody's noticing the handcuffs. Yeah, but just to stand here all the time. Keep watching. Neighborhood place, same people every night. It's about the same time now, too. The girl, Valentine. That's the part of it that doesn't fit. She wasn't the type. Wasn't a regular customer. Yeah, Johnson, it does. I'm just all mixed up. I want to go back Lawrence, to... Lawrence, the... on your first night in the big city, how did you meet this Sally fight? Uh, how about a demonstration? I want to see how a boy from the stick strikes up a conversation with a strange woman. Oh, well, I, I know my way around. I, oh, no. I, I don't know. She said hello to him. What do you think? He probably blushed, too. Johnson, you contradict yourself. You said she wasn't quite the type. Brisk, sharp lady with a jaw. There's one. That guy. Huh? Which one? Point him out. There with a the cigar. Just came in. Oh, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I must have seen all the people over here last night. I remember the waiter. Excuse me. Valentine, wait. Lieutenant, wake up. What's the most likely way the kid here met Sally Fife? Got picked for a patsy or whatever it was. Somebody probably introduced him, don't you think? So I'll see you later. Hello, friend. Oh, excuse me. Just wondered if I could borrow your newspaper a minute. 
Hey, what kind of a cigar is that? Here's your change, Luffy. 15, 20, 25. Okay, Jake, I'll see you. Wait a minute, friend. The newspaper will help you sell. See you later, Jake. And sit still. What are you picking the fifth? Must have hit it nice and fancy cigars, paying off your debt. I still got to figure out how you Hey, look on my arm, man. I want to ask the bartender, Jake, here about you. What do you want? He's all right, mister. Sit down, sit down. Name's Loopy, huh? What do you want? Turn around. That skinny young guy standing over there. Ever see him before? One next to the heavy set man? No. Hey, Jake, what do you let snoops like this in for? Loopy's all right, mister. Loopy, you haven't been doping the races at Hialeah. Papers turned to the front page. News about a murder. And that kid's picture. So at least you've seen him before in the paper, haven't you? I didn't notice. Hey, what do you want? Here, Jake, here's my selections, all of them. I'm getting out of this. Sure, Loopy. Give me that. Hey, look out. Get your hands off. I got him, so cool off. That other guy coming is a cop. I... I got nothing to be afraid of. Oh, no, no, no. Just wanted to get rid of these notes in your pocket. Only they're not all racing selections either, are they, Loopy? <laughs> Pawn ticket, huh? Mister, I told you, Loopy here's all right. What's going on, Valentine? I don't know, Johnson. Pawn ticket for a thousand bucks. What? Yeah. No wonder he pays his debts today, smokes such fancy cigars. Now, look, Golly, I ain't got nothing to hide. I just been wondering what to do about it, that's all. I'm Loopy Fife. Huh? Fife, did you say? Sure. This dame got killed. It's... Well, I've been wondering if I should volunteer as expert testimony or something. I mean, she's my wife. <laughs> Rhymes. Sally Fife, she's my wife. Well, how do you like... Come on, friend, we're going to have a little talk. Now, look at me. Come Take on. it easy. You ain't done nothing. Oh, no. Just hocked a mink coat for $1,000. Well, that's what it says here on the pawn ticket. One mink coat. Oh, here's no doubt. Well, it's a cold All night. right, so what? So I did so what? Sure, it's here, but I've done it before. She don't mind. I always get a winner the next day. Brings me luck, that's all. Raise a little quick cash. She don't mind. If you're talking about your wife, what do you mean? That she's too dead now to mind? Cut it out, I said. She and me were just friends. God rest her soul. So stop looking at me that way. I didn't kill her with the boss. Ain't it so, Jake? That's what you call platonic, that's all. Picking the guy who gave her the mink, not me. Sure, go up to Emmitsville. Big shot salesman, he's the one. Vic Burnett. Yeah, ask Vic Burnett. We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Listen to the difference. Yes, now you can actually hear authentic scientific proof of the difference between new RPM motor oil and premium type motor oils as designated by the American Petroleum Institute. Auto engines are equipped with irradiated piston rings. And during operation, minute particles of radioactive metal wear off the rings. Geiger counters are thus able to detect the amount of wear actually taking place. Listen now as the Geiger counters click off the difference. First, the low wear rate of the new RPM. Now, the much faster wear rate of the conventional oil. Now, new RPM again. You have just heard authentic scientific proof that new RPM motor oil cuts in half the wear rate of critical engine parts, doubles the life of the average auto engines between major overhauls due to lubrication. Proved in the laboratory and checked out in severe road service, new RPM motor oil is sold with a money-back guarantee of satisfaction. Ask for it at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. Burnett, the big man from Emmitsville, here in town for a convention. He wanted you to help one of his employees, the young clerk, Lawrence Ferguson. Because Lawrence was locked up in jail for murder. Too confused even to defend himself. The only trouble is, though, the girl Lawrence said that he met for the first time last night, the night of her murder, now seems to have been mixed up with Vic Burnett himself. 
So if your name is George Valentine, you're pretty much inclined to agree with Claire Brooks when she says... I never did like his looks, George, from the day he sold us this wire machine. I didn't like the kind of stories he told. Oh, but... sure, sure, Brooksy, but don't break the recorder on account of him. You get the rest of my notes on it? Oh, didn't you finish? I'll hook it up on the phone again. No, no, that's all. Burnett didn't tell you where he was going after he left the county jail, did he? No. Huh. How do you like that? Write up your notes for a client that doesn't even... Well, we can't find him either, Brooksy. Salesman must have sold himself a powder and then taken it. Mr. Valentine, now you're just getting my boss in trouble. He wouldn't have done a thing like that. Kid, you want to save your job or your neck? I don't know. I'm all confused. I don't feel very good. This place just reminds Lawrence, me... Lawrence, of... we brought you here to her apartment to see what else you could remember. Well, I'm not helping any. I know I'm not helping any, but... If you just leave him out of it... Burnett's in this up to his ears. Now, for the last time, relax. Forget what a sucker you've been and think. I'm trying, Lieutenant. That's the couch I woke up on. I know that. Go wash the glasses. Did you? Mm, no, I don't think so. Must have been drugged. Clean glasses. But liquor stains on the table and floor. I came up here to have a cup of coffee, I know, but... Kid, that husband, Loopy... You saw him in the bar when you met her. Didn't you see him up here, too, later on? Sure you did, didn't you? I didn't see anybody here except her. Oh, for the love. Okay, Rube, wait for us here. And by the way, there's a sergeant outside the other door. Well, going to get around to me now, huh? Just wanted to give you time to make your story good, Loopy. I know you guys. I think if you keep me cool and I'll get hotter, hey? Well, let me tell you. I'm just a husband, see? But we're divorced. I'm not surprised. She was a businesswoman. A little sharp around the edges, maybe, but standing a guy like you is a horse of another Incompatible, color. Incompatible, that's all. Just one of them things. Give the little lady her happiness, I said, but still play tonic. Soft spot for old Loopy. You know how it is. Which brings me to the mink coat. A little matter which was over and done with yesterday afternoon. A little load of the mink, so Loopy could pick the horse of the right color. If you don't mind my lifting your figures of speech. Just saw her for a minute in that bar, but I never came up here later on. Vic Burnett gave her the coat, huh? Yes, sir, but you see... When? Last year. How long's he known her? Ah, oh, several years, maybe. Fancy apartment. Her typing service didn't buy her all this. It's how she met him. Special work on his district records or something. He's down here a lot. And she used to write to his office when he wasn't. Boyfriend, that's all. It's perfectly legal. In love with business. <laughs> and he paid her in mink. All right, so she knew a few things about him. So she had a liking for the finer things. Now you're warming up, friend. She blackmailed him, huh? She did not. You can't talk that way about my wife, God rest her soul. A shakedown artist. So that's what you are. I didn't say that. Oh, stop it. Huh? Well, look what's here. Picked him up over that office machine at the convention, Lieutenant. You see, I wasn't running any place. Just dodging a little. I know, Mr. Burnett. Hoping we'd have it all solved by now. All hung on somebody else. Thanks, Sergeant. I guess you don't need me anymore, so I guess I'll just... Oh, no, you don't, Luby. Stick around. Okay, okay. Listen to me. I want you guys to understand something. I hired you, Valentine. Don't forget that. Yeah, to rescue a guy so dumb he walked into the oldest frame-up in history. So old, no matter what he said, no jury would ever convict him. But that doesn't mean you couldn't be the man behind the frame, does it? Sure, he must be. Listen, I said, I would have told you everything. You know how it is. Head salesman, travel a lot. Why should I tell you about Sally? She was my style. She never asked more than I could afford. She was all right. She was a good sport. When did you see her the last time? Last night, supper. Go on, make something out of that. There you see, supper. He's all at supper. How was she dressed? Huh? Well, I, I don't remember very nicely. Was she wearing a mink coat at supper or wasn't she? Sure. The one I gave her. Why? Grab that guy. Chloe. Oh, no, you don't. I know, Sergeant. Grab him, Sergeant. Grab him. He's the one. He did it. Get him. He got away, George? Oh, yeah, sure. Of course he got away, Brooksy. Johnson and Burnett after him like a couple of overfed bloodhounds. The kid's here with me. Oh, well, why didn't you go with I wanted the... you to read me back some notes, that's all. You see, the closet's been all torn up, ransacked. So it had to be Loopy who got the coat, we know that. But he didn't get it until after supper. So he was up here late, probably after he'd been in that bar. George, he saw his wife with Lawrence, so it would have been easy for him to follow them up there and... Yeah, yeah, sure, it was... George? Yeah, I'm right here. Uh, look, I'll, uh... 
I'll be back up to listen to those notes myself instead, okay? Well, I'm just typing. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll be up at the office. Let Johnson look for people. I'm all through. Wait for me. Notes for Burnett. Interviewed Lawrence Ferguson. Oh. Notes for Burnett. Interviewed Lawrence Ferguson in jail. Has stack of circumstantial evidence against him, including the fact that he was caught running the scene of crime. I'm just getting started. The only trouble is... Oh. Hello, ma'am. I I heard that voice and thought it was Mr. Valentine. I thought you were. You're Lawrence Ferguson, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. Do you mind if I sit down to wait for him? How'd you know? Hmm? No, no, sit down. He described you, I guess. Oh? I was all dressed up last night. I don't look like much anymore. Oh, don't be silly. It's... I thought George was with you. I can't afford to buy the kind of clothes a salesman do. They're jerks. You know that? Every Where sing- is George? Oh, I don't know. He was on the phone. I, I I was waiting for him. Then he hung up and took off like lightning. Thought maybe he'd come over here. Heard him say that. I still got on one of my uh, handcuffs. I guess I better wait for him to take me back to jail. That's all I'm here for. Oh. Go on with your work. I'll, I'll just sit here and wait. Well, thank you. Only trouble is, a matter of a mink coat... Loopy, Sally Fife's divorced no good husband, Hopkins. Oh, Mr. Valentine didn't know yet, I guess. Loopy got the coat last Only night. That's what there made... is. With a man who committed murder, maybe even with a coat as motive, Hockett, seems to me he'd be a lot more likely to sell it. Mr. Valentine's a smart man, isn't he? At the time Loopy hocked the coat, today, he didn't even know his wife was dead. I'm sort of like Mr. Valentine in some ways. Smart. Where is George? Tell me. If he left to come here and you were with him, he'd be here by now. I don't know. I'm waiting. Just like you are. Yeah. He said the closet at Sally's apartment was all ransacked. Loopy wouldn't do that, would he? He'd know where the coat was. Maybe he already got it. You mean, while you were in that bar with his wife? Maybe. She wasn't wearing it. How did you know she even had a mink coat? I don't know, ma'am. I'm all mixed up. Yes. Play some more. That machine, that salesman sell. <laughs> Big shots. Uh, jerks. They even got a song. Salesman of all FOE, we will have prosperity. <laughs> Isn't that a laugh? Like a bunch of high school kids in a football game. Well, I see what goes on. I can make more money than any of them. Lawrence, stop. Stop. I'll, I'll, I'll play it if you want. Sell it. Also, Mr. Burnett, it bothers me you'd hire me and still keep things secret. But you did hire me, so answer a few questions. Your correspondence up there in Emmitsville, Sally Fife did business with you... So whoever handles your correspondence would know about her. Check. And that's your clerk, Lawrence. He would have known about her through the handling of district records, too. But he insists he didn't even know her name until last night. Why? (laughs) You killed her. Poor innocent boy being framed. You killed her. Mr. Valentine's smart. You're stupid. You killed her and ran, but you got caught. Don't say that! That's what she said. I'm sorry. They were sorry for me. They thought I'd been framed because I made it look that way. I spilled liquor on the rug and the table. I pretended. I used to give Sally information about Mr. Barnett. And then she'd get mink coats and things. I don't care. I don't want to know. She wouldn't give me my share. She said I was stupid the same thing you said. Don't! Don't touch me! Why not? I have to kill you. Get away. Sally couldn't give me my share. But I got even with her. And if they caught me, I still made it look like I'd been framed. 
I looked for the coat, but it was gone. Get away, I said. But he still got away. Stop it. You Lawrence, stop it. I wasn't through. Oh, I'm sorry. They thought I'd been framed because I made it look that way. I still lick her on the rug and the table. I pretended. I used to give Sally information about Mr. You did. She'd get me coats and things. Listen. Here, I don't want to know. You'll turn that thing and sort of record what I say. That's stupid. The same thing you You think you've got a confession, don't you? Why's the button on this crazy thing? I didn't know. No, I didn't. You bumped it yourself. Well, you're what kind of a prove I am. And so, Mr. Burnett, I guess you don't need a report. The kid you wanted me to help is nothing but a pin-brained loony. Oh, you button it on the right Oh, yes, it will, Buster. Oh, George, you're here. I'll show you the button. Oh, now, hey, hey, Angel, cut it out. It's all over. He didn't hurt you. But I didn't know where you were. I thought he'd done something to you. Well, back when I was telephoning, he was outside with a cop. He slugged him and ran. But I told you I was coming right over. George, why didn't you say what had happened? Why well, didn't look, you... Look, now, take it easy, Angel. I didn't want to scare you. I wasn't positive he was headed here, and... Besides, I came as fast as I could. But you must have got here a long time ago. You must have been standing outside and well, listening. Angel, it's all over, I, I said. I know you needed real evidence against him. I wouldn't have George. let him hurt you, Angel. Come on, let's go. You didn't do that on purpose, did you? I mean, not warn me and then let Brooksy, that... see. what kind of a guy do you think... Well, it just happened that way. Oh, look, darling, come here. There. I'd convince you? No. I don't believe you. Oh, for... oh, but don't stop trying to convince me. If at first you don't succeed. Some things can be out of sight and out of mind without creating any special problem. But you really can't afford to forget about your car's battery. Neglect the battery and you take chances with your car's starting power with the efficiency of headlights and taillights and accessories. For your own convenience and safety, have the battery inspected periodically at a standard station or an independent Chevron gas station. A few minutes for this car saver service tomorrow may prevent hours of delay later on. And you'll know that your battery has a high enough charge, that the water level is right, that terminal posts and clamps are clean. You'll know that the battery is ready to give your car fast starts and to keep the lights bright for night driving. So for your own comfort and safety, wouldn't it be wise to ask for battery inspection tomorrow? Ask at your independent Chevron gas station or your standard station where they say, and mean, we take better care of your car. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey has starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Ken Christie as Lieutenant Johnson. Ed Begley was heard as Burnett. Rollin Morris as Lawrence. Hal Gerard as Loopy. And Jim Nusser as the bartender. The music was composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs>